Ladies and gentlemen, there are more people here today than there usually is at a McGee press conference. <laughs> I am going to be receiving two awards in Nashville next week at the annual meeting of the United States Conference of Mayors. And with the exception of those awards and the city budget this fall, the trials and the tribulations and the triumphs are almost over. I shall not run for re-election. When this term is over next April, it will complete a 28-year administrative record. Incidentally, my early goal when I decided to run for mayor in 1960 was to beat Daniel Holmes' record. And I never expected, however, to beat him by four years. I succeeded. And it's now a national record for cities of 500,000 and above. But let me add this. Daniel W. Holmes was a great model, a great mayor, and a great friend. In fact, his last public appearance was to endorse me for mayor in the 1960 election in which I was in contest with Henry Royce. 28 years is a long time to serve the good people of Milwaukee. Milwaukeeans very rightfully demand good, clean government and they demand a high level of efficient services. Some are not always willing to pay for them, but most of them are quite willing to pay for them to gain efficient service. This, uh, the endorsement that they have given me in seven elections, says that they feel that they must have had a good return for their trust in this administration. I made a pledge to the people of the city of Milwaukee on the day of my inauguration in 1960, and I said that I would devote my full energy and devotion to making Milwaukee a city of opportunity, a city in which all of us may live and work and grow in relative happiness. Now, with the help of many talented, selfless people who have served this city in a number of ways, we have met and we have overcome a number of problems. And I think that most would agree, certainly our visitors now agree, that Milwaukee is one of the most livable cities anywhere in the world. And certainly many problems remain, just as they will in the entire world. Oh, Mother Milwaukee has aged very, very well. By the end of this year, more than $1 billion will have been invested downtown by private investors. And also added to this our outlying areas since 1980. Now, it's safe to say, and I say it, that Milwaukee's best days lie ahead. Now, since 1960, this administration has initiated more than 100 major proposals. And those proposals can be categorized under five major programs. And briefly, I want to discuss each of them. The first and the foremost in 1960 was economic development. And this has been the underlying thread in every major proposal of this office since 1960. 
1960, I called for, and the council responded, called for the first municipal department of economic development in the nation. And we have our land banks, which is one of the most successful urban industrial development programs in the nation. We're the only large city in the country which is now getting industry from its suburbs. There has been these movements back to the land bank. The land banks are home to 81 companies, which provide more than 3,000 jobs and generate more than $2.6 million a year in taxes to the city government. And we have also revitalized our downtown and the Menominee Valley, which is an also another heartland industrial area. Now, there has been a great deal of physical development. We started in 1960 on the effort to establish a community renewal program, and we did establish it. It was the first in the, of its kind in the United States. And we set as a top priority in those days low-cost housing, and those low-cost housing programs have been in place up until now since the federal cutbacks uh, we have to have another, entirely another consideration. But our efforts towards rehabilitation shall continue, and they have been very successful efforts. Milwaukee has no slums. You can't show me very many cities in the population size, our class, 500,000 or over, that has no slums. And in addition to that, under the aegis of social development, to deal specifically with the problems of the young and the aged, I established the Social Development Commission and the Learn by Doing programs that place young people in jobs. Our fiscal development is reflected in our solid AA bond rating. We are the only city east of the Mississippi, north and southeast of the Mississippi and east, that has a AA bond rating and it is a strong rating. Our unique ADAPT budgeting system, which, makes, which has the unique feature of making m budgeteers out of our middle managers, accounts for much of our efficiency in budgeting. And our Department of Intergovernmental Fiscal Liaison, uh, Bill Carey's here, the new director, and congratulations, Bill, which I established uh, three years, around 1963, it took me three years to get it established, and it has helped win many battles in our fight for a fair share of federal and state dollars. And working with the have-not cities of the state, we succeeded in changing the formula for ch shared taxes when others said it couldn't be done. Unfortunately, however, the state is now rolling back the clock to pre-1960. We have nurtured cultural and recreational development. We have strived to run a lean government while maintaining a relatively high quality of life. I proposed and we completed refurbishing of the Pabst Theater. We initiated a systematic approach to building tot lots and libraries. We put them on a 10-year program. Summerfest, the City of Festivals Parade, the Ethnic Festivals are going to be a part of making us the tourist capital of the North. This is one of our objectives. And very soon we expect to have the structure of Winterfest in place. I should like to mention just a few programs that fall under the category of general services. One, we consolidated our garbage and rubbish collection. Two, we started a sanitary and storm sewage separation project. Three, we've had a variety of creative uh, beautification projects. Our beautification committee was one of the first in the, in the United States. And along with this, we created an entirely new municipal court system. Now the programs I've described generally are personal initiatives. But uh, as the great baseball pitcher Satchel, Satchel Page said, if you've done it, it ain't bragging. <laughs> now, my main endeavor was to set up these five new centers of intelligence when I took office. This was in the area of planning. These are where the voids existed in Milwaukee. Now, these have been in the areas I just described. Economic development, physical development, social development, fiscal development, 
and cultural and recreational development. Now, we have served the people of our city by making our voices heard at the national level. As President Carter so kindly acknowledged at the White House, I was the innovator and the initiator of the national urban policy, which was adopted by the Carter administration and destroyed by the current administration. And incidentally, on the subject of the national urban policy, that was the last time and one of the few times that I had a friendly luncheon with the journal editorial staff. As a matter of fact, they bribed me by paying for it at the Milwaukee <laughs> Athletic Club. <laughs> I am grateful for the work of the people in the Common Council, and humanly and naturally those who helped the programs along over the years. And I'm also grateful to those who have served so well on the boards and commissions and within city departments. And I am certainly grateful for the support and, and uh, being there when necessary and uh, whose, whose intellect and uh, own initiatives uh, I, I applaud, uh, those of uh, Dr. Karen Lamb, my wife. Thank you, Karen, for being here today. I appreciate your presence very much. And of course, I am most grateful to our people, the people of the city of Milwaukee, whose image I've always carried and will carry. I thank you for over two and a half decades for comments. Ladies and gentlemen, are there any questions? Mayor, is this a happy day or a sad day? Oh, this, uh, I'll tell you uh, how sad it is after next April. <laughs> or how happy. Mr. Mayor, yeah. are you going to be endorsing anybody? Uh, I may. I haven't uh, conclusively decided I will. It depends on the field. And it depends on, uh, to me, how, uh, how close the candidates come in their programming and uh, in gaining public confidence. What is your mayor, what is your deepest regret? Uh, the defeat of President Carter. Uh, what, what, what could you have done about that? Well, I was related uh, in this sense. I had presented to the, the, the President of the United States a complete plan uh, for dealing with the social, the educational, the crime problems, the housing problems of the city of Milwaukee. And uh, I had the rationalization that the city was not, the city, that the city's inf influential structure was now moving and was more united and that the private sector would probably help with the plan and that I wanted to make the plan, uh, I wanted my end result, I needed two million dollars for the planning and that the end result uh, would be uh, that we would have an approach to the problems of education, that we would have an approach to the problems of crime, that we would have an approach to the problems of job training, and in other words, the every major problem in the area. And uh, I had gained the interest of the White House and I had gained a staff assistant in the White House to execute the plan and tragically uh, President Carter got defeated. And that was the end of the plan and that virtually the end of urban America. What are you going to do now? Huh? What are you going to do now? Oh, I'll write a lot of dirty letters in the Milwaukee Journal. <laughs> <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> <off>. <laughs> You've mentioned your accomplishments, Mayor, and they certainly are many. Did you make any decisions wrong during your 27 years? Can't well, if I did, I wouldn't admit it. <laughs> yeah. Is there one big thing that you that you would like to turn around in all those years? I don't. Uh, I can't recall anything that uh, you mean. Thing I I would have wish I'd done different. That, you that I wish I'd done differently. Right. Well, not in terms of programs, uh, because it is my feeling, if you examine the structure and these centers of intelligence, you're not going to find any gaps. Now, if anybody wants to debate me on the gaps on those programs, I'll be happy to accommodate them if they have any stature at all, because I know what has been done, and I know there are many, and very few people put it together. Now, uh, I, I really... Uh, uh, if I had a regret, it would be the 
the lack of capacity to work another 10 hours a day because it, I, I will tell you that this job never left me. It never left me day and it never left me night. And I could never pull the shades down. Even if I went on vacations, I never could pull the shades down. Let me say this to you. The people were great to serve. But the thing that is reflected mostly to this position is the meanness that surges upward. And so uh, you have to constantly be aware of this. You have a relatively weak mayor form that is relative to, say, to a city like Baltimore or New York. Or uh, now Chicago is even weaker than Milwaukee because they don't have the machine anymore. But you don't have the powers in the office that ought to be vested in the office, and I've expressed this again and again. And the only way that you can make progress is by continuously taking an incremental step at a time. And, and you are continuously called upon in this position to array a new set of tactics every time a problem comes up. You are, and there are times in which the mayor is a bobbing cork. I'm not talking about how I felt, but the mayor himself is a bobbing cork. Now, the experts in urban science realize this. Tragically, too few of the people, Reston once said in the artillery of the press, that the press should sit in the seat of the executive. And I have yet to find many reporters that sit in the seat of the executive or try to really find out what it's like to have to deal on multiple fronts, on multiple decisions, because there never, never, never is one decision at a time. I get up thinking last night, I was thinking about the problem in Madison again and what they've done in the assembly and, and, we're, and I hope we can stop them in the Senate uh, with, uh, with our shared tax picture the historical shared tax picture that has worked so well for, for us in Wisconsin, that has kept our cities from going into bankruptcy. And, the, and I, I, I woke, woke up and I was concerned about that particular problem. In fact, one of the things I did today, early in the day, was to talk to Bill Kerry about what the hell's happening up there. And uh, we, as a city, can only succeed related to our resources. This city has 30% of the state's poverty. This city, if this city were a private corporation, we'd be in bankruptcy. Because what private corporation could succeed if 20% of its clientele is in bankruptcy? Now that's what we're up against. And I've, I've always regretted, if I may be critical, now let me make one thing clear. I have never publicly criticized any media except the Milwaukee Journal media, never. No other media. I've had difference. I've had some issues with Channel 12. I've had some issues with Channel 6. I've had some issues with 4. But my policy was to go to the media involved and talk to them about it. And I usually always found the open door and a willingness to discuss the, whatever the problem was. The problems were relatively minor. So let me make that very clear. Mayor. Now, it seems to me that it is very important to realize what the tax structure is all about and what it does to our city. Now, I have just recently seen two editorials calling for more money and another editorial calling for the restrictions of our shared taxes. How do you put that together? Are there any questions, ladies Mayor, and gentlemen? Mayor, in what? light of what you mentioned about the weak mayor system, do you have faith that the Common Council will uh, do greater battle with your successor? And if so, uh, is that a good sign? Well, I would only hope that he comes to office under the present, if he comes to the office under the present circumstances, that he physically is strong enough to endure what he is going to contemplate. It has been forgotten that I said the president was too damn old to be president in 70. And I believe that then, I believe it now, and I think it's true to me. I think that uh, while I've been inordinately uh, had an ordinarily good health and still have an ordinarily good health, uh, I feel that uh, it's time for a guy that's 70 uh, to start doing other things other than trying to guide a city and this big and this tough in terms of the problems we face. And uh, I say that in a comparative term. What, what are some of those other things? And what would you like to do? Well, the happiest days I had in my life, believe it or not, were when I was writing, freelance writing. 
I enjoyed that more than anything else. And when I've been in, in this government, I've enjoyed editing more than any other activity. Just as I'm talking about activities. Here. So I will, uh, I will go back. I, I don't think I'm interested in that. I'm not, I've, I have, I've been talked to about that already, but I'm not, I'm not sure I'm interested in that. Mayor, have you any advice for the next mayor of the city in terms of being elected on the second? I've only got one simple piece of advice. Don't be a plastic mayor. Don't be afraid to speak up. And don't let the newspaper set your priorities. You know, it's just like the guy on television who says he doesn't let the press uh, tell him who's going to be quarterback or what does that affect? Because there's a conflict of interest. It isn't a conflict of interest with the media, because I never had a conflict of interest with the media in general. Let me dispose of that, and I can prove it. The record shows it very clearly, and particularly the electronics media. And I had a very good relationship with the city hall reporters of the Milwaukee Sentinel this term. So uh, this is not the generality that, uh, that the general would have you believe it is. Okay, Dr. what I'm saying is you have to take your position for your city and you have to be straight about it and you have to be willing to take the flock for it. You know, here's a good example right here. A man who stood up for this city and I st we stood together and he took all kinds of flack in Madison. The mayor of Kenosha, who got, just got appointed by Thompson, took all kinds of abuse from Madison. Why? Because they had guilty consciences, because these men were telling him what they were doing to the cities of Wisconsin on the shared tax picture. You know? And none of us can afford to be plastic mayors. This is the one fear I have, that I see too many players are playing a goody-goody game. You know, like this is a game of hearts and flowers? Well, I'll be damned, this isn't a game of hearts and flowers. This is a rough ball game we're in. This is tougher than football. Can I ask and you, you have to be willing to play according to the rules, but nevertheless play very hard. Can I ask you what you think about the people who are running to uh, take over this job? Well, not yet. Mr. <laughs> 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 Lamb, did you encourage uh, your husband to not run again? What was your role in the uh, decision? My husband makes up his own mind. <laughs> But today is the third happiest day in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what were the other two? <laughs> Why did you decide to do this now? Well, Dave, I decided to make this announcement now because I thought it was the most appropriate time. Why? Because Metaphysically, I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> have, have, have any of the people who said they're running for mayor asked you whether you're going to run again? Have they were called and said, just tell me. Well, they all, I think they assumed I was going to run. They, they what? I think they assumed I was going to run. Norquist said that he had a debater, a debate coach, a fellow getting ready for me. I mean, you know, okay. I assumed I was going to run. I, was, I think Connor kind of said today that he assumed I'd take him at his word that I was going to run. How about Marty Shriver? I don't know what Shriver did. I didn't talk to Shriver about you it. You haven't talked to him about it? I haven't talked to him about it. That's just unfortunate because I haven't been able to meet with him. He wanted, just wanted to meet with me and, and a couple of the others wanted to meet with me. I just haven't had a chance to meet with him. I shall meet with him. Are you campaign for one of those guys, do you think? Would I campaign for? You still have a lot of political drive. Well, I don't know. I, I, uh, I don't think I'm going to get on the stump. You make some appearances here and there. Would you guess? Uh, no, I, I think the best I would do is if I gave an endorsement. I wouldn't give an endorsement, however, unless I thought it was going to be utilized properly. Uh, if Jim Brennan had had rearranged his budget and had used that that. Uh, that endorsement I gave him, and we ran out of money real quick, he might have been city attorney. But, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to run into that kind of a situation again. Mayor, would you uh, win if you ran again? Would I win? Well, I... Let's look at the record. I never lost. Why should I lose now? <laughs> Does that mean yes? Does <laughs> your advice about your successor being tough apply to dealing with the suburbs as well? Major cities, well, look, you have the most segregated suburbs in the United States. The figures are handing out of the metropolitan area are not the true figures. 
because that absorbs, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the poor of the central city. And when I say segregated, I'm talking about economics. Race follows economics. But the situation is that we do have and have had for two decades the most segregated suburbs in the United States. Not the fifth, but the most segregated. Now, please don't tell anybody uh, over at the journal who runs the shop over there that I said this, because they all live in the suburbs. But the fact is, the old German saying that a man's heart is where his pocketbook is, and their pocketbooks are mainly in the suburbs, uh, that, that that governs the situation. Now, when I, you know, this is no joke with me, and I'll tell you why it's no joke. It's no joke for me to see the captains of journalism all live in the suburbs. It's no joke, because uh, they, they, they lose touch with the realities of the central city, and most particularly, our need for additional resources. I just saw a big program, what, what was the program that I got the other day? Oh, on employment. I got a program all written out for me, and it said it would take a creative mayor. It wouldn't take a creative mayor to put that program in effect. It would take either the federal government or the Lord to put that program into effect. Because to put a program like that into effect is going to take millions upon millions of dollars, and we don't have them. We don't have them. If, 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 if the Assembly's program gets through, we're going to be missing 22 million again. Well, we're missing 50 million from what Earl did since, 19, since he was elected. So, you know, we can't take this. And I can't seem to get this through people's heads that the most important thing affecting Milwaukee Give me a housing problem, and give me the money along with it, and I'll resolve your housing problem. Give me an educational problem, and give me the money along with it, and I'll resolve your educational problem. You betcha. You name it. Now, somebody says, well, it isn't always money that solves everything. Well, I'll say this. Money beats the hell out of anything that comes into, into second place. You know? Because uh, that's, that's just about the size of it. And... You have to get, we have to keep our feet on the ground. We have to be realistic about what makes a city work. And any gaps that you see in the city or any needs that you see in our city, you have to be able to supply the dollars, the resources to attack the needs. And this is a growing dilemma since both the state has cut back on us because we're not sharing properly in the growth and the federal government is cutting back on us. And if I get somewhat vehement about this, I mean it to be vehement. Because I think these are deadly problems. And I think they're deadly significant. I don't think any of them are a joke. When you look at the problems of a large central city, I only thank God for one thing. That we are in better shape than almost any city, north, south, east, or west, except the cities on the, on the southwest and the, and the who are now f f f getting themselves into bad, bad trouble because of what's happening to oil over there, but they still have a good su su substructure because of the space program and the military programs which supports their economies, which we do not have. But other than the Southwest, uh, we, uh, we stand about as strong as anybody else is standing and better than most in this country. And this is reflected again in our bond rating. Over the past months, a uh, couple months, we know that you have been thinking about not running again. Was there one day when you realized that you were not going to uh, run again? And was there one thing that came to your mind and said, well, it's time to uh, hang it up? I started from the fundamental tenet that uh, uh, it's time to retire at 70. Now, uh, First of all, I do think that at 70 you're starting to get aches and pains that you, you that you didn't have, and you, they get more and more severe. And uh, another thing, and most particularly, some man might go in at 66 and get a leg to 70 and do a great job, but uh, after a while you have difficulty, especially with 28 years, recycling. Now, I think and that's why I said I hope we don't have a plastic mayor in here. I hope we have a fighting mayor because there are fights ahead. And 
I remember this common council said they were going down there and they were going to talk nice to all those Madison legislators. And they were going to straighten out everything. Yeah, they straightened it out all right. We lost $50 million. I mean, you know, that nice talk. You know, it's not a game of hearts and flowers. Are you saying that you've you know, it's not a game of, let me make that straight. Let me get this straight. You know, the journal is great at talking about style. There's talk about my style. Well, I hope to hell I never adopt the style that, uh, of a Joel McNally, you know, are you that saying, style. Are you saying that you've lost some of your enthusiasm for the fight? Yeah. For what? For the fight. Well, I'm saying that the next mayor, I hope, will have the enthusiasm that I have had and I would have if I were staying in the job. You know, I'm not going to quit by, until next April. <laughs> mayor on the lighter side, uh, are Milwaukeeans going to miss uh, opportunities to hear your singing voice or are you still going to find more of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sing through the summer. <laughs> Mayor, what if by next February the field of candidates has presented itself and you don't like any of them? Would you reconsider your position? <laughs> I don't think so. They'd have to make me off of mad for that. And I'd have to, Karen would probably get a divorce. <laughs> that stuff flies in the house, you know. You can't avoid it. It just it creeps in the house. <laughs> this morning, I'm down at City Hall. There's a couple of guys sitting out in the front of my house, a couple of reporters from the Journal. And uh, the police asked them what they were doing there. And, or, or, yeah, the security, you yeah, know, police. And asked them what they were doing sitting in the front because, uh, well, they, they didn't look like pleasant people. And uh, <laughs> they, uh, they said that they were checking the painters out to see whether <laughs> the work was being done by the city. Now, this is a direct quote. Or this is what the officer said, and I have, I have the, uh, I have the notation, and uh, that was very flattering to us. That, you know that uh, that we would uh, we would use ordinarily we'd use city people to paint our house, except that <laughs> I have a cousin that has a contracting business. And he, he does it uh, for so much less. The whole job's going to cost me about six thousand bucks, but. Uh, how ridiculous, you know, for what the hell didn't they just say, we want to nail the mayor, we want to get the story. And, uh, you know, why, why not be honest about it? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. My pleasure. Well, Rich, that's the end of the